You know where I would like to start. Responding to your proposal and your speech, first, we all know well. These are facts of history, as you said. That all southern Russian lands were transferred to us during the formation of Soviet Ukraine during the creation of the USSR. There was no Ukraine as part of the Russian Empire, there were areas. And Ukraine itself in the 16th century, when it came, it consisted of three regions. Kiev and the Kiev region, Zhidomir, Chernigov, that's all. It came voluntarily from the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, from Poland. We have a letter in our archives, I have already talked about this, they, Russian Orthodox people, turned to Moscow, to the Tsar, and so on, and trying to defend their rights. They turned to Warsaw with the same thing, that they, Russian Orthodox people, asked them to preserve, that they demanded, and so on. Then what happened happened, the Soviet Union began to form, and then a huge Ukraine was formed, and first of all, and to a large extent this was done at the expense of the southern Russian lands, this is the entire Black Sea region, and so on, although, all these cities, as is known, were founded by Catherine II after a series of wars with the Ottoman Empire, well, okay, it so happened. That modern Russia came to terms with this after the collapse of the Soviet Union. But when they began to exterminate everything Russian there, then, of course, these are prohibitive things. And in the end they announced that the Russians are not an indigenous nation on these lands. Well, this is generally complete chaos. You understand? And at the same time, they also began to exterminate Russians in Donbas to the applause of the West, as it turned out, having signed the so-called Minsk peace agreements with us, they did not intend to implement them, as it turned out later, moreover, they generally refused to carry them out publicly, but they also began to drag this entire territory into NATO, brazenly, not paying attention to any of our protests, not paying attention to our position as if we did not exist at all. This is at the center of the conflict that is happening today. This is the cause of this conflict, and, of course, if we had developed relations with fraternal Ukraine, I still say that this is fraternal Ukraine, meaning that our ethnic composition is fraternal in the literal sense of the word, normal, in a modern, friendly way, then then it would never have occurred to anyone to commit actions, for example, related to Crimea, how, if everything was fine there, if they treated Russian people, the Russian language, and culture normally, if there weren't these coups dead at there, would it even occur to anyone in Russia to act in Crimea the way we acted, of course not. We had to protect people from this Nazi vermin. What were we supposed to do? They simply presented us with a choice in which we could do nothing else but stand up for the people who live there. The same thing then began with Donbas and Novorossiya, but, of course, we need to do everything to ensure that the entry of these territories is smooth and natural, and that people feel the results as quickly as possible, you know. We and Russia have many problems, we and Russia, but throughout the world, everyone is fighting corruption. But the way Ukraine lived within the framework of Ukrainian corruption, there is nothing like it in the world, I assure you. There is nothing like it in the world. You can believe me. I communicated closely with former leaders, a bet on everything on a vote in the Supreme Court, on a vote in the Constitutional Court, bid, moreover, when we discussed what to do, they said, we will decide, it will cost a certain price. The top officials of the state told me this, my jaw just dropped, I asked them, is this how you do it, yes, they do that.
now they say. That weapons are coming from Ukraine to the Middle East. Of course it appears there. Because they sell it. And they sell it to the Taliban. And from there it goes anywhere else. Everything is bought and sold, it is not by chance that I say this. Because people in Novorossiya and Donbas lived in such conditions, everything there is imbued with this. We need to calmly implement our standards with respect for society, for the people who live there. Of course, I repeat, we ourselves have enough of these problems. But the level is just completely different, the level is completely different. There this corruption is actually legalized. Why do Americans try to fight this corruption and fail? I don't think they will succeed. They are now planning a change of elites, both economic and political. Everything will be the same, but it shouldn't be like that for us. Yes, there are problems, but we must overcome them together and introduce them gradually, including Russian legal standards, just as we gradually did in Crimea, it's not easy to do. It is also not easy to switch to the Russian regulatory framework, but we will gradually do this, and we are already doing this, you said. That outwardly some things are changing, yes, some things are changing. And we have a program for the development of these territories, and significant funds have been allocated. What would I like to say to all Russian citizens who live both in the new territories, as we are talking now, and in those territories, that form the basis of the Russian Federation, of course. We all in any part have the right to expect from the state that it will act effectively and people will see the results of the country's work. But it should be a two-way street. And people must also understand, everyone, including in new territories, of course, and they have the right to expect results, but we must work together so that the country as a whole actively develops in the right direction and at the pace we hope for, that is, effective joint work is needed. In this regard, of course, I support you, in what? The fact is, that you said, that you, say, in Zaporozhye, in the Kherson region, in Donetsk, intend to control the actions of the authorities. You definitely have to do this. You definitely have to fit into this work. You said that you are going to take some steps. I even ask you about this. Because control by public organizations is extremely important, including because of what I said above. Because all the established schemes do not disappear from the fact that a referendum took place, well, you understand what I'm talking about, therefore, we are sending funds, and we will send them even more. The main thing, thank God, is that our economy functions rhythmically, everything is working out. We are not changing any of our plans. We are not abandoning any of our plans neither in the social sphere, nor in terms of infrastructure development, in other areas. This is support for industry, security, and so on. But there are additional resources for the development of these territories, they are large, of course, you need to control every step. I will definitely ask you to do this. And as for our international activities, this is also important. You just said that someone wanted to expel us from another organization, but then they did not expel us. You know, the stronger we are economically, militarily, and internally politically, the less desire someone will have to exclude us from somewhere. Well, they excluded us. They gave up something. They refused our energy resources. And what? What result? 
This year our GDP growth will be 2.8 or 2.9. Or even 3%. And in the leading economies of Europe it is in the red, small, but a minus. And they suffer. They really have problems. We are not happy about this. But we are simply stating this fact. And in military terms too, they need to defeat Russia on the battlefield. Now they sing differently. Now they speak differently. This does not mean that we should behave aggressively. This means that we must be sovereign and independent in every sense of the word. This means that the economy and real production, which should be connected with the world economy, of course, cannot be any other way in the modern world. But the economy must be self-sufficient in key components, one, that allows our country not only to survive, but also to go forward. That's when you and I are now turning into a country where in our economic growth structure, 43% is already processing production. When we cease to be what they once told us, they pointed their finger that we are a gas station, not an economy. When all this changes, when we become self-sufficient, then there will be fewer people who want to exclude us from some organizations. And there will be more and more people who want to apologize and invite us to work together in a variety of areas of activity. Therefore, we need to focus on the domestic agenda. We need to solve the problems facing us, move forward, develop, strengthen demographics, and, of course, strengthen ourselves politically.